Hello everyone and welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Donna and I'm a recent master's graduate from the Material Science program from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, also known as Ontario Tech University. So today we're going to go over some commonly asked questions in chemistry at the high school, college, and university level. So if you needed any help with homework or with tutoring, then check out the links in the description below. Now let's get started on our set of questions for today's session. Okay, so question one is a very multi-step question. So we have a scenario where a student determines the molar mass of acetone, CH3COCH3, by the method used in this experiment. She found that the equilibrium temperature of a mixture of ice and water was 1 degree Celsius on her thermometer. When she added 11.1 grams of her sample to the mixture, the temperature after thorough stirring fell to negative 3 degrees Celsius. She then poured off the solution through a screen into a beaker. The mass of the solution was 90.4 grams. Okay, so part A, what was the freezing point depression? Part B, what was the molality? C, how much acetone was in the decanted solution? D, how much water was in the decanted solution? E, how much acetone would there be in a solution containing 1 kilograms of water and acetone at the same concentration as she had in her experiment? And F, what did she find to be the molar mass of acetone, assuming she made the calculation properly? Okay, so let's start off by answering part A. What was the freezing point depression? So freezing point depression, I'll just define up here. This is the degrees of lowering of the temperature. Okay, so it can be calculated by taking the absolute value of our difference in temperature. So delta T is equal to the T final minus T initial. And these bars on either side of the equation tell us that even if the value is negative, we're only interested in the temperature difference. So T final uh, was negative 3, and T initial was 1 degree Celsius. So delta T was 4 degrees Celsius, which is our freezing point depression. So part B asks, what was the molality of acetone? So since we have the freezing point depression, we can also use the equation where the freezing point depression is equal to Kf times molality times I, which is the Van Hoft factor. So let me just label all of these values. So Kf is known as the cryoscopic constant, and we need to find it for water. M is molality. And I 
is something called the Van Hoff factor. And when we have a non-ionic solution, such as acetone and water, the Van Hoff factor is equal to 1. Uh, so now I'm also just going to search the cryoscopic constant of water. Uh, in degrees Celsius. So it's around 1.86 degrees Celsius over mo molality. I'm just going to write that value down. And now we can plug in our values. So delta E, delta T is equal to 1.86 degrees Celsius over molality. And we're trying to search for molality. The Van Hoft factor is equal to 1. And delta T, we solved in the previous step which was 4 degrees Celsius. So now, if we solve for molality, we get molality is equal to 2.15 m. Okay, so now let's check out part C. How much acetone was in the decanted solution? Uh, so, the acetone in the decanted solution is just equal to how much of the sample she added. So, we just have 11.1 .1 grams of acetone. And part D asks how much water was in the decanted solution. So we know the final mass of the solution was 90.4. So if we recall that the mass of solution is equal to the sum of the mass of our water plus the mass of our acetone, then we can solve for the mass of water. So therefore, the mass of water is equal to the mass of solution, which was 90.4 grams, minus the mass of acetone, which is 11.1 .1 grams. So then we get 79.3 grams of water. Okay, so now for part E. How much acetone would there be in a solution containing one kilogram of water and acetone at the same concentration she had in her experiment? Okay, so let's say we had a solution of acetone. Solution of acetone in 1,000 grams of water. So I just converted kilograms to grams so that everything is in the same uh, value. And we want it to have the same concentration as um, our experiment. So our mass of acetone in the experiment was 11.1 .1 grams. And the mass of water in our experiment was 79.3 grams. So you can see we just have like a little ratio uh, showing mass of acetone to mass of water. Uh, so we end up getting a mass of acetone equal to 140 grams.
So this is in one kilogram of water if we wanted the same concentration. So now, for part F, what did she find to be the molar mass of acetone, assuming she made the calculation correctly? Okay, so let's say we had 140 grams of acetone per kilogram of water. And we also found out that the molality of our solution was 2.15. And the units for molality is moles per kilogram. So if we divide the two, then you'll see that the kilograms will cancel out. And we're left with our units in grams per mole, which is molar mass. So we end up getting 65.11 grams per mole. Okay, so that answers all of the questions. And the junior tutor said that the freezing point depression refers to the degrees of lowering the temperature. This will always be a positive value. Thus, the answer was 4 degrees. Uh, what was the molality? So freezing point depression is related to the molality and the cryoscopic constant of the solvent as given by the equation. Uh, where Kf is the cryoscopic constant, M is molality, and I is the Van t Hoff factor. So the cryoscopic constant of water was 1.86, and for ionic non-ionic compounds, the Van t Hoff factor is equal to 1, so they got a molality of 2.15. C, how much acetone was in the decanted solution? So we assumed that the sample she added was just pure acetone, which was 11.1 grams. How much water was in the decanted solution is just the difference between the mass of solution and the mass of acetone. So they also got 79.3 grams of water. And then how much acetone would there be in a solution containing 1 kilogram of water and acetone at the same concentration? Okay, so they showed out the conversion factors, how if we had 11.1 grams over 79.3 grams, uh, yeah, then we would just convert it, and they also got 140 grams of acetone. And then finally, what did she find to be the molar mass of acetone, assuming she made the calculations properly. Since molality is moles per kilogram of solvent and one kilogram of water has 140 grams of acetone, then, uh, and then they summed it up and got 65.11 grams per mole. So this solution is correct. Thank you.